guarantee you it'll spin first. It's, it's just spinning. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. First and second just spin. Oh, it's so much fun. <laughs> oh, and then you put it back in automatic mode and and you just go back to cruising around. It's so it's so hilarious. All right, let's see if it'll do this without having an SD error or as people that know GoPros know, you'll it just says SD error. So, since I don't know what footage I lost uh when I had the SD error, I'm just going to start straight square from the beginning and uh, talk about the fact that we're gonna be doing a little vlog here that revolves around the topic of mountain runs. Now, mountain run can mean a ton of different things to a variety of different people. Um, it can mean going up and doing a little out and back kind of cruise. It can go mean going up and going to rip. It can mean going up and going to shoot photos. It can mean a ton of different things, right? And I feel like we all get into this weird this weird kind of in between where nobody actually knows what a mountain run is supposed to be and we find different groups of people attacking each other over what a mountain run is mountain runs in general can mean whatever you want them to mean like that can technically mean whatever you want it to mean a mountain run a toge run whatever you want it to mean that it, it, it's wow okay Anyway, um, it can mean whatever you want it to mean. I think the issue arises when people assign a meaning to it and then start telling everybody else that that specific meaning is the right one and that if the, and that the other person's meaning is completely and totally wrong and not valid. So that's, I think, where people go a little bit wrong in terms of talking about what a mountain run is or what a toge run is. Now, another thing is that a lot of people will assign rules to mountain runs or what a mountain run is supposed to be, they'll assign rules to it and then go out and tell everybody else that they're wrong because they don't follow their rules. Well, first of all, the other person may not have even known that this person's rules existed in the first place. Now, before we get into actual, like, you know, before we get into anything more about rules of mountain runs, the rules of mountain runs are simple, right? The rules of mountain runs are simple, in my opinion. Don't cross the double yellow and don't drive beyond your limit. And that's that. those two things, if you stick to those two things, theoretically, there should not be a single issue. Theoretically, there should not be a single issue if you stick to those two basic rules. Now, the issue arises when people say, okay, let's take, for example, driving beyond your limit. There, there, and sometimes the issue will arise where people take the driving beyond your limit rule and will apply that same logic to they'll they'll they'll, they'll, they'll apply that rule to everybody else, but they will me make it mean the fact that their limit equals everybody else's limit. And if someone's driving, say quicker, for example, if someone's driving quicker than the other, then then if person A is driving faster than person B, person B may say, well, you're driving beyond the limit. Well, person A's limit might be different than person B's limit. Person A might have more experience than person B. And depending on, and depending on that, that, that person's background, depending on how long they've been doing what they've been doing. And to be fair, that happens far too often. You'll see people go, you'll see people say, oh, you're driving, what? You're, you're driving beyond your limit. That, that's, that's bad, that's wrong, this and that. And the other, when in reality, that may be beyond person B's limit, but person A's limit may be different than person B's. And that goes for really, that goes for a, a ton of different things. Can I make that? Yes, I can, let's go. Now, another thing is crossing of the double yellows because you'll see some people say, well, it's the absolute utmost important thing in the entire uh, in the entire world of mountain runs and spirited driving. You'll see other people that say, well, I could see far enough ahead so it doesn't matter. And there, you can see other people, and there's other people that say, well, there's varying degrees of what is, you know, if you're a little bit over, then it's whatever. If you're all the way over, it's something else. I, for one, maintain the opinion that 
anything over the double yellow is is not it, anything over the double yellow is not okay because because now let me and because the fact of going over the double yellow if you go over the double yellow a little bit you're gonna think okay well that was fine I can go over a little bit more next time I can go over a little bit more next time and I can go over a little bit more next time and eventually you're gonna be crossing all the way from white to the opposite white and using the whole road so that's kind of where you have to think about it starting off now the other reason why you don't want to cross over the double yellows is let's take for example let's take for example the dragon uh, the dragon is a road that a lot of people will have driven a lot of people will have known about at least and say for example you go a little bit over the a uh, little bit over the yellow because you think you can see far enough ahead well that might be fine but the thing is it you, you and you may be able, be able to see far enough ahead but the sport bike that comes around the corner the opposite direction doing 50 60 70 miles an hour may not be able to correct in time and and there may end up being a, a collision so that's what you have to think about even when you think you can see far enough ahead the sport bike for example coming the other way going 50 60 70 who knows how many miles an hour may not have time to adjust their angle and adjust that bike to get themselves back up to where they need to be to be in a proper position to avoid you and plus they're in their own lane if they're in their own lane they shouldn't have to worry about avoiding you you know what i'm saying so and and the same goes for cars if a car is coming the other way they should not have to worry about avoiding someone in their lane coming the other direction now i keep this in the back of my mind at, at all the time you know where is my escape route if someone ends up being directly in my lane coming the other direction and it's one of those things that you have to keep in mind because sometimes you know sometimes people do cross over the double yellows i do see it and it's something that is unfortunately something we we deal with a good bit as driving enthusiasts, mountain run enthusiasts, toge enthusiasts, whatever group you want to put yourself uh, into. Now, another thing about the about the whole crossing the double yellows thing is I would say the excuses around crossing the double yellows are one of the main ones that I've heard uh, multiple times now, and I find it hilarious every time I hear it, is, well, it didn't feel like I was crossing the double yellows, and I'm like, they didn't feel like it, huh? They didn't feel like it, huh? Basically, if you cross over the double yellows and you hit the person coming the other way, it doesn't matter how much it felt or didn't feel like you were crossing the double yellows into the other lane. It doesn't matter how much it felt like it or not. What matters is the fact that you hit the person coming the other direction. So that's what you have to think about. Even if even if you're all the way over there and you're like, yeah, it doesn't feel like I'm crossing or, oh, I have more than enough time to get myself back in my lane just in case. You have to think about it. You have to think about it from the standpoint of how quickly could the person in the other lane be approaching me? And I know, I know that for a fact, I, I know for a fact there's going to be people that are going to say, well, he shouldn't have been going so fast. That's not, that, that, that's not, that, that's not my fault. He shouldn't have been going that fast. And the fact of the matter is, I'm not trying to get into, I'm not trying to get into an argument about who's right. I'm trying to illustrate how we can all, how we can all share the, share the lanes that we have on the mountain pass more safely while driving spiritedly so that's what this all comes down to another important thing is say for example say you've come in from way you know way way off somewhere you've driven hours and hours and hours you know to come check out a mountain pass right if someone comes up behind you if someone comes up behind you uh that and it's like right there right on you they are not ruining your vacation just use a pull off and they'll they will and they will continue on they will disappear they will disappear you are not you are not protecting them by not pulling off you are not you are not preventing them from being unsafe by driving slowly in front of them if you're going a certain pace and the person behind you wants to go a quicker pace use a pull off and they'll be and 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 they'll be out of your hair immediately there there's genuinely no, and and you're not and you're not 
admitting any kind of defeat by using a pull-off. You're just saying, I wanna go one pace, they wanna go a different pace, that's how it works. And that's kind of another one of those unwritten, unwritten rules of the mountain pass and the other thing though is for people that come, and this is the flip side of that coin, this is the flip side of that coin and I wanted to address this as well. If you get up behind somebody and they refuse to pull off, do not start, you know, blaring your horn out. You can, okay, you can flash your lights. You can flash your lights a couple times, but if they, you know, completely refuse to pull off after a few times of flashing your lights, don't lay on your horn and start yelling at them and stuff like that. That only escalates the situation because if they at that point have just because if they refuse to pull off after you've you know flashed your lights at different pull offs and stuff like that, they are not pulling off. And by you know blaring your horn and stuff like that, you're only escalating the situation into an area that you don't want it to be in. So either pull off yourself and wait or pull off, turn around, run the other way, and then run back. And by that time, they'll be they'll be out of your hair. So another topic that is worth mentioning is yes, you do, you most likely do need to pull off for that Miata, even if your Corvette makes 700 horsepower. I want to finish off this vlog by saying that really the whole point of even making this video, even talking about this subject is down to the specific thing that, and, and the thing is like, not everybody understands this, uh, or not everybody understands this, but the mountains are where we as car enthusiasts, and not, not everybody, because not all car enthusiasts do this, but a lot of us car enthusiasts, the mountains are a place where we'll go to, um, to just kind of let, you know, let the, let everything, let everything go, you know, like let everything that, that ev everything that may be going on or things that may be going on in your life, or like maybe if you're feeling you know, like somebody's feeling like stressed out about something or whatever, a lot of the times you go to the mountains and that stuff will be, that, that stuff will disappear. That stuff will be gone. And you think about it, you know, when you think about it, it doesn't really make sense. But when you're up there in the mountains, you're going, you know, um, you're, you're taking, taking, taking in each apex, you're, you know, stopping to take a picture of your car at what might be like a massive, gorgeous overlook and stuff like that or you just, you know, want to go for a really nice mountain run. A lot of that is what is what drives the the whole the whole spirit of mountain runs and toge driving in general. But anyways, guys, I hope you all did enjoy this vlog in the GTI. If you did, don't forget to leave me a like. Tell me in the comments down below what you guys thought of it. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe for more. And also, if you have any feelings of your own that you want to share about the whole mountain run topic, then make sure you post them in the comment section below so we can all uh, take a look at them and read them. But again, I'll see you all next time. Talk to you guys later.